Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It is February 7th, I think, Saturday? Mm -hmm. Six. Sixth. Okay. This is Merlin. Back behind me is Titan. But anyway, we're having a pug dog morning. So let's do a little update on COVID and vaccine. Everything's about vaccines right now and responses. So again, there's a lot of different people's opinions on all of this. I'm just promoting the idea of science and literature, <laughs> which is really, really where we should be all the time and not on emotions or, uh, I don't know what, politics. The other thing to keep in mind too is no one has to listen to me. I get periodic people then comment, and you know who you are, who tell people, well, just ask someone else, why would you bother asking him? Well, if there's other people to ask, ask them. But you know, the great thing about being reasonably intelligent and a physician for a long time, and someone who reads a lot, maybe a philosophy major, and someone who's in the public health service with a focus on infectious disease prevention, now and then people know things. It's just one of those things, and labels like, oh, you're a pediatrician or you're a gynecologist or you're a general surgeon or you're an ER doctor and you can't know about this stuff isn't true because ultimately where I was trained at Ohio State University, we were always told the entire time we were there, we were doctors. And this, this is gone now, I wanna emphasize, but we were doctors who just happened to be an OBGYN or a doctor who happened to be a plastic surgeon or a doctor who happened to be a ophthalmologist because we just had to take care of people and you'd have crossovers when you were doing one thing with other things. So so you had to read and be a holistic doctor. So anyway, so that's the bottom line and that's what I try to provide because I read a lot and I understand probably COVID as well as most people on in the United States, maybe not at the level of the super scientists, but in terms of someone who's taking care of now more than 400 outpatients successfully with only five hospitalizations and no deaths. Um, I think we have a clue in clinically and scientifically. So anyway, let's talk about uh, the if you get infected. If you get infected, you're going to get immunity a certain percentage of the time. That's longer term is what we're seeing in all the data. I had a great talk about this with Dr. Amy Darter, who's an immunologist this uh, yesterday. And I'll be offering some insights this week coming up on how you can get your immune system tested at her office eventually in the immediate near future. Because one of the things is there's probably like there's 5% of people who don't make a response to the, vi or to the vaccine. There's probably 5 to 10% of people who don't make that great of a response to the infection in terms of getting the right immune boost. So is, are there people we want to identify? Potentially, yes. For that, and there's some options which I'll go over this week. But for the most part, 90% plus are gonna are gonna be immune after the infection. And here I'm gonna let the dog the doggy go. <laughs> I think oh, geez, oh, we're here. falling apart. Kim's getting the dog. But anyway, so so 90% of people roughly are gonna have long-term immunity or more from the infection. And there's a nice paper that I'll put out that I'm gonna put on today that I've been, I mentioned showing the Marine group that had some reinfections and how they did and their tighter stuff. Um, and then I'll put on the other one showing what happens if you get a vaccine, if you've already had it. And that's kind of the thing. If you've had the infection, it, it really is like you kind of got the vaccine, makes sense. And so when you get your first vaccine, your levels go up to the level or above a level, even that people who get the second vaccine. So really for the most part, if you're under 55 or excuse me, if you've had the infection, you usually are gonna have complete antibody response levels in just with one vaccine. But the issue is if it's, if you're getting the Pfizer or the Moderna, Moderna are you gonna be covered for travel later if you only get one? The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is getting closer to approval. I will, I'll spend tomorrow, today and tomorrow in my spare time trying to find research papers on the Johnson & Johnson. Uh, as of last week, there weren't really that many out, but um, that's what we're looking for. And so once I see them, we'll be, I'll be able to comment on whether it's worthy of taking. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is 
I still don't think you should get vaccinated within three months of an infection. Um, there, there's definitely data showing that you have a higher uh, negative or side effect rate, definitely if you get your second one, potentially with the first one. And I think common sense wise, since you're protected, why would you get it then? Let's get people who haven't even been vaccinated or infected vaccinated right now, since it's gonna generally give pretty good immunity um, for everyone with just one vaccine if, with the Moderna and the Pfizer. Third subject is really, I'll touch base on Kawasaki disease or inflammatory responses from viruses. Your innate immunity turns on and you over rev when you're a kid with a viral infection sometimes. It's very rare, but it definitely happens. Um, and so I think the vet, there's a little bit of an overblown part of this because most Kawasaki disease is not very significant. Occasionally it can be significant. But um, I do also believe most pediatricians are aware of it now, uh, which really was, just to be clear, is was not always something at the top of their mind um, with things. I mean, some pediatricians, yes, they were. Some pediatricians occasionally would, would be top of mind, but some people just don't think about stuff that's rare. I mean, because if it's not, not something they see routinely, they don't think about it. And then if it's a mild case of Kawasaki's disease, and if it's something they don't think about, they're not going to think they even saw Kawasaki's disease. So the, it's, it is not, um, I think, as important as it's been made out to be, but it's still a concern, I want to emphasize. Um, but again, not like a, a death sentence or anything like that for people. Uh, fourth, uh, once again, schools need to be open. Teachers need to go back to work, um, especially if they get vaccinated. I mean, multiple schools in our communities have been open the whole time and they've had policies in place. And for the most part, uh, they've done great. And if someone wants to yell at me because yes, some more, they've been more private schools, the Oklahoma City school system could have gotten this done. The whole problem with all this is politics. You got to get you got to understand that. The data has been very clear. I've been talking about it since last spring. Kids don't get sick that often. They don't spread it that often. The school should have been open the whole time. And for all of you who are going to yell at me for saying that, go online and start reading the blogs and the comments on all the suicides and that minimally it's up 400%. Uh, there's some data coming out that it could be as high as 900% in the U.S. for um, school-age suicides now. So I, I think in the end, you know, it was Trump who said it, and anything Trump said is discounted. He was correct. But you have to remember, jerky people and nice people can get things right. It doesn't change how you perceive them necessarily in terms of their personalities, but the reality is someone can say something that's correct even if you don't like them. I mean, sorry. <laughs> I mean, just because they're <laughs> someone you don't like doesn't mean they are, they're wrong 100% of the time. <laughs> but in the political world we're in today, um, that's where we are. So that's pretty much the update. The final thing, I want to, a big shout out to um, Thrifty Pharmacy and Danny Lynch. All the pharmacists everywhere are doing their part. But Danny's Pharmacy, there's one in Edmond, there's one in Oklahoma City, has just been amazing for our patients. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Danny. And then the other thing is they are actually getting vaccine in. So right now they're doing phase two vaccinations on people over 65. They will hopefully be able to roll out phase two vaccinations for under 65 in the next few weeks, and perhaps in the next several weeks to a month, they may be able to go to phase three. So if you call uh, Thrifty Pharmacy, uh, the I believe probably the main location, um, or go to their website or go to their Facebook page, which would be great, um, that you can get on a list probably uh, pretty quickly for whatever group you're in, uh, and which I would encourage you to do, especially if you're a phase uh, two person uh, with risk factors, obviously. And the other thing to keep in mind, if you're a healthcare worker watching this and you somehow miss the vaccine, whether you're, they offered it and you were gone, you were nervous, or you've just been falling through the cracks, which has happened to a lot of healthcare workers, you are a phase one person. You are not to go, you don't need to go to the state health department site and fill it out to see how medically ill you are to see what phase you're in then. If you are someone who takes care of patients or in a patient setting, you're phase one. 
And so you can call Thrifty and get on the list immediately if you can document that you're a healthcare provider to them in some respect. And that means if you're working at a healthcare office and you're seeing patients, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you're a provider, you're a clerical staff person, you're a janitorial staff person who's in the health in, at a hospital or in a clinic, that uh, you can get the vaccine because you're a fa tier one. You just have to remember the differentiation there. So am I missing anything, Kim? No, I, I do want to say we have no ownership in Thrifty. Before oh, we have no ownership yeah. in Thrifty. None. They've just been amazing. I don't have it. I can't. I don't. I don't even know if it's well. Who knows? But I have no ownership in Thrifty. I love Thrifty. I love Innovative Pharmacy. I love Flourish. I love uh, um, all the local pharmacies. Well, I'm, well, support. I'm thinking the Norman one on Lindsay. Oh my God, um, they're fabulous. What? Oh, right. eyes up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Barrett's. I mean, uh, oh God, what's that lady's name in Edmond too? Sherry's. Oh, TV discount. All of the, these compounding pharmacies. Um, oh, I'm so embarrassed to forget the one in Norman. God, I've said a million people there on Lindsay Avenue. Oh, they're the bomb. Um, but anyway, I, I always joke under pressure. All the compounding pharmacies are great. We've just worked really well with Thrifty for getting all these patients taken care of. So just a shout out to them too. Um, but all, but when in doubt, go to a compounding pharmacy for your normal meds too, because they're the bomb. Um, so take care, not to denigrate Walgreens or whatever. They're great too, so anyway. That's it. I've probably now offended 400 people, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good Saturday. Oh, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Don't congregate. Now, if all of you, if you've all been vaccinated, yeah, I don't care. You can congregate. But if you have unvaccinated people, do not do a Super Bowl party. Do not. We don't want, we're finally through Christmas and New Year's and our numbers are coming down between people separating and people um, being vaccinated. And the final thing is the change of the week. The new data is like every other virus. Know what's going to be the most important thing for spread? Finally, we know for sure. Is it the, is is it close proximity? Maybe, but know what it really is. It's the weather. And that's the most important thing. And it's going to be that data is coming out and it's going to show that while the masks were helpful, they are not the key thing. The key thing is it's a winter virus. So it can spread in the winter and it can spread with more humidity. And if the winds are higher and that's what the data is showing and they can one group has predicted all the outbreaks over the last or rises over the last six months. I'll be sharing more of that data, which is what it always was and what we said. But again, we don't do science anymore in the United States. So anyway. Oh, yeah, since you said that about the Super Bowl, I'll throw this one question out that I remember. There's a lot of people asking. So what if you've been vaccinated, but your friends or family haven't? Is it safe for you with immunity to then go, or is it safe for them, I guess, for you? you you're not, you're not going to get it, nor are you going to give it to somebody. It's them congregating together can cause an outbreak. I don't want people who haven't been vaccinated or have the virus to congregate together yet in a group. That's what happened at Christmas. We had 41 new infections that we treated on New Year's Eve in my practice. 41 new infections. And they were all from the Christmas thing. But I wanna just say it again, 41. And unfortunately in that group, since some of them were a little later during the start, and that over that next weekend we had or the next few days we had another 20 three of those people ended up getting hospitalized they all survived um but no do not get together if you're not vaccinated or previously infected okay thanks